Well, hello, everybody over the southern region. This is the weekly water outlook for January 5th, 2014. I hope you all have had a nice holiday period. Now we get into the brunt of winter and a really important time as we get into water resources for the new year. Well, the big story this week, as you're probably hearing on TV, is the Arctic cold, the Arctic vortex, which has uh, broke down and sinking to the south. The uh, jet stream that holds those very cold airs up there is now weakened. It's allowing it to sort of spill to the south. As we start out this week, you can see how far south the uh, Arctic air has spilled. Uh, it's spilled over much of our region. Um, the very coldest air is up to the north, but still, it's, it's still way to the south, uh, the coldest air. Now, if we go and talk about the Arctic Oscillation here, I wanted to point out that the Arctic Oscillation is a measurement that I look at, a teleconnection that gives me some clues as to the future as far as temperatures and indirectly precipitation. And what it's showing here is you can sort of see here that the Arctic Oscillation has really um, come down into this negative range here. You can sort of see right here, look at this, how far it's expected to dip this week. And that's saying that the cold air is going to really be sagging to the south. But here's week two. Look how it rises again to a positive rating week two. And then as we get uh, into the middle of the month of January, it sinks down again. So really, I think what that's saying is we're going to have alternating uh, periods of well below normal temperatures and then uh, periods of, of above normal temperatures, but at least starting out this week well below normal due to that negative Arctic oscillation. So if we look at midweek, how far the cold air sinks south, the coldest pure Arctic air below normal temperature or below zero temperatures are in this area in gray. But you can see this area of red sinks all the way over a large part of the nation. So the story this week is going to be well below normal temperatures just about nationwide. So the last seven days observed precipitation over the south. We can see very little significant precipitation, no significant precipitation over the vast majority of Texas. Most of Oklahoma, not a whole lot. Uh, there was a modest uh, snowfall over the northern and eastern parts, but really a pretty quiet week as far as uh, precipitation goes. If we look at the percent of normal rainfall, what we see here, rain and snow precipitation, uh, the dark red is indicating uh, because of no rain or snow, 25% uh, or less precipitation. So a quiet week across the south. Temperatures averaged also well below normal. We see again another week of this area of green is at dark green is three degrees below normal. The areas in blue are six to nine degrees below normal. So even though the coldest air was way up here, we're looking at 15 degrees and now even 30 degrees below normal in this region, uh, we still see well to the south. Uh, temperature is still three to six degrees below normal. Now the, here's a snow extent and we're in the as I'm making this briefing, we're getting snow coming a little bit further south, but you can sort of see the snow extent uh, into the western part of Oklahoma and all of Kansas at the current time. Now we're going to have two systems this week that are going to be impacting the U.S. System one is the one that's producing a winter storm over parts of the Midwest. That's going to be brushing just parts of the south, parts of Oklahoma. It'll be lifting up to the north, and it's not going to have a whole lot of impact, if any, over uh, Texas. And then as we get towards the mid and latter part of the week, here's System 2. And System 2 is coming in a little bit further south. The energy is that area in blue and green, and that will be brushing a little bit more. But again, it's going to be mainly north of Texas, mainly Oklahoma. And this is also quite a bit weaker than the first system. Now, if we look at the surface low tracks, uh, the only system this week that we're going to have a defined surface low, a more organized system, will be the system number one. And this is why it's not going to affect us a whole lot. It's developing just right over the region here, and then it's uh, pushing up uh, towards the, the north here. And you can see that it's going to remain uh, developed just right over us and then move up towards the north. So uh, not a whole lot of impact. Now, if we look at precipitation forecast for the next seven days, what you see here is some modest precipitation. Uh, it's in the form of snow, so that track of heaviest snow is going to be originating in parts of Oklahoma and then moving up towards the north. And then this precipitation here is mainly with the second week, week two, or not second week, the latter part of this week, and that's occurring over the eastern parts of Texas. 
As far as snowfall goes, this is snow accumulation this week. And like I said, there's some of it's going to brush the northeast part of Oklahoma, but the snow track this week is going to definitely be more in Missouri, up into the Midwest, uh, across Illinois, Indiana, up into uh, parts of a large part of Michigan. That'll be the main active snow track this week. But as far as the weekly hazards go, it looks like the primary hazard this week will be temperatures well below normal, uh, gusty winds, and uh, not a precipitation hazard this week, but a temperature hazard will be the main issue. Now, it's interesting. If you remember that Arctic Oscillation I showed you it was going from a strong negative this week to a pretty strong positive next week, and that's going to really change temperatures. Next week, it looks like above normal temperatures over a large part of the nation next week, which is really going to be a break in this pattern that we've had for quite some time. If we look at precipitation for week two, January 11th through 18th, we see areas in yellow is more modest precipitation. That most likely will be in the form of liquid precipitation rain. It does show a chance of eastern Texas and parts of Oklahoma a little bit more rainfall next week um, after a dry week, mainly dry week this week. Uh, West Texas right here looks like temperature or precipitation will remain uh, below normal west of this line um, on week two. Now I wanted to start looking out a little bit further, just briefly discuss uh, weeks um, three and then weeks four. Uh, this is week three. And keep in mind, these models are way out there, so don't put a whole lot of confidence on them. But I look for general trends. And this is week uh, three as far as precipitation. Looks like a very dry pattern. Week four, also fairly dry. So it looks like generally the month of January, it looks to me like we're going to have below normal precipitation over the region. Now, if we look at temperatures, because that Arctic Oscillation sort of fluctuating here, this is week three, January 19th through 25th, another cold week as some cold air pools are drops down. Week four looks milder, although keep an eye, look at this here. We got a very strong uh, pooling of cold air, and oftentimes when you get that, it does sink to the, uh, the south, and that could be, as we get into February, could bring a cold February if this does decide to drop uh, down to the south. But I do think this shows that we're going to have alternating temperatures um, and below normal precipitation looks to me like uh, a good bet for January. So this week, I think the story is going to be cold temperatures, two systems brushing the area. But again, it looks like they're going to be brushing the area, not directly impacting us uh, all that much. Week two looks like milder temperatures, and then it looks like a flip-flop pattern of temperatures, perhaps below normal precipitation as we go into the middle of the month of January. Nice talking to you this week. I will be updating some information throughout the week, and have a nice week.